and you bored him to death. Apologies for my. Oh, he's fine with me. Oh no, it's my volume. Never mind. <laughs> uh... Happy New Year. Okay, sorry I'm late. I got hypnotized by a coding problem. And <sighs> uh, we have those too. So, uh, here we are. Um, I believe the only item I had on the agenda for today was to find out from you how things are going with attempting to merge server-side baking and give you an opportunity to complain about how difficult it is. I'll let Tank take that while I try to remember my questions. Um, I just Thank today, Mark? like you two mean hours ago, um, got the Linden, or our code up to where Linden Labs is for release plus a few things in uh, your beta. I haven't had a chance yet to look at the Sunshine stuff. I was trying to get our code up to where Sunshine is forked off of, so I'm only dealing with the Sunshine code and not both, because otherwise it was over a thousand chain sets. Ah, to deal with yes. All at once. Good, good point. Um, fair enough. Uh, okay. Um, I think he's no, also standard. waiting on. I think he's also waiting on me to tackle merging in the Coco. Yeah, because I can't do Mac. There's, uh, th There's there were 270 a... chain sets now to deal with, so it's a lot easier. That's that's a plus. Okay, there was another batch of stuff that went out to viewer beta today. Some pretty minor changes, one crash fix um, uh, last night and. And today, I should say. Um, and that will be appearing on the beta viewer shortly, probably Monday or Tuesday, I guess. Um, so uh, watch for that. But I don't think those changes have been merged out to the Sunshine branch yet and are probably not that urgent. Um, so those are coming. But is it safe to say it won't be before the end of February? 
I think that's reasonably safe. Okay. Um, any ETA on the Chewy work? Apparently there's been all kinds of activity on the JIRA. Uh, not that I know of. Is that plan um, to come out after service I'd make? I don't think that's, I don't think that ordering has been established. One way or the other. Um, it's, sorry, they were the, the only, the only question you missed was when we're going to ship server side baking mix, and the answer was we don't know. Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's helpful for us to, to know, you know, but when it's going to be ready. <laughs> as long as it's not before the end of February, because that's what we're aiming for, and we won't be ready probably until then. Um, right, well... Yeah, so what we'd, obviously what we'd like to know is that we've got uh, at least one version of all the third-party viewers that's prepared to cope with it. Um, and uh, that's certainly, you know, getting affirmative on, on as many of those as possible uh, before we make a final call about what our target dates are would be, would be really great. So um, that's why we're making an effort to keep the pressure up on having you do that testing. So we'd rather you were ready before we were. Well, my next yeah, thing we'd was... be ready before you are, too. Yeah, well, that would be ideal. I'd prefer that way. Um, we had a discussion today about uh, your defaults for deferred, um, and because uh, we noticed with the merge that we've got those changes in now. We're you're referring to the to you're referring to the graphics changes in th right. the three four four beta branch. Right. Uh, right. There there are a lot of bugs that go along with having deferred enabled, and I understand that. The materials project is going to require deferred. Um, have you considered the side effects to that? I mean, it's it's bad. It's it's it affects a lot of people, and there's a lot of people who um, can't even run deferred. So, if you're looking for getting adoption on the materials uh, project, you should probably see if it's possible to get materials project working without deferred. Uh, that's not a goal. Um... So the, the, the expectation is that um, like you know if you don't have if you don't have deferred rendering, you will be seeing second life in the same way you're seeing it now. Um, if people do a reasonable job with the diffuse texture on on things, um, it, it will it will still be reasonable. Um, but uh, th that's, I think, a separate issue that I, I'd like to go back one step and say, um, you know, are you finding problems that are appearing with greater frequency in the in the in the beta branch now with it? Because what what happened in addition to various other changes to the rendering system, we added more levels of granularity. So I think it's now. Instead of just four, there are seven. There are yeah. levels so in between. You have deferred enabled on, on just medium, I believe. No, well, just medium, high, and high up. Yeah, there, there are some uh, in-between levels, and one of them is where deferred gets turned on. Um, and, and, I, and that differs by platform, I believe. I have it uh, on uh, at medium, just at, at the mid point. Right, but have you all, uh, well, so... I mean, it defaults there for me. From, like, if, I, if I'm if i on low, if I'm on the in-between low and medium, if I hit medium, uh, atmospheric shader is enabled. Well, that's different than deferred. Deferred is lighting and shadows. Lighting and shadows, which... Oh, right, it, right, right. It's irritating that those things have different names, but... Yeah. That's what they really are. 
Oh. And yeah, it's a, it's a crasher. Uh, I'm not. We 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 had a pretty heated discussion because I'm not um, a big fan of of turning deferred on for most users when deferred is accompanied with as many bugs as it is, including crashers and all kinds of other weird things. I'd love to see those bugs get fixed before we start forcing it on our users or surprising well, we're not, our users. We're not, with it. Well, okay, so I'll rephrase the, the, the defaults. The defaults for lots of cards changed based on looking, primarily based on looking at what people were running and whether or not they were getting good frame rates. And uh, so we looked at the, the reported frame rates for users on different cards. And f when it looked like people were getting really good frame rates on a card that we had classified as a very low number, we would move it up a little bit. Um, and there was also, you know, some manual tweaking of that as well. But um, we're, we're making an attempt to actually measure the experience people are getting on different cards as an input to the process of classifying the cards. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm working with Dave a little bit on that. Um, and, and, and thank you. Um, so, so one of the things that has happened is that the, there were a bunch of rendering system changes. Another thing that has happened is that we reclassified a bunch of cards. And a third thing that has happened is we added a, a bunch more levels so that there's a little more granularity available in choosing what level we, we assign people to by default. Of course, no matter what we do by default, you can change it, right? So well, the, you can the always is, either make it better or worse. The argument is that um, most users are not going to know that the bugs that they're seeing are directly related to uh, deferred, and that all they'd have to do is just disable deferred to get rid of those bugs. Most users aren't, they don't know that. And, and the type of thing that will happen, for example, is our users who are, uh, let's say, ultra users, this is the argument I make today, um, log into our latest update and deferred is enabled suddenly by default for them and things look broken and the reaction is predictable. Oh, this, this version sucks. I'm going back to the old version. And that's what people do. Why do you have to have the same default as Linden for the user? Well, we don't actually, uh, up yeah, until so this point. Now we're having a discussion about what we should choose as a default, but we've never, I've certainly never used Linden Labs defaults as a good example. Not necessarily that it's a bad example, but it's, it's not a good example most of the time for us anyways. Well, and the fact that we're changing the meaning of what the numbers are means that they, you know, as soon as any of you import the, that set of changes, you're going to have a, you're going to have a, a merge question to deal with, and and, and that that's uh, well, we have a lot that's of inevitable no matter. Well, yeah, but I mean, you, you, this is one where you'll have to actually think about what the semantics of our change was and decide whether you want this or not. And I don't think that's something that is going to get in your way too seriously, except that. You know, the further you let it diverge, the more often you have to make that choice. Um, Could it be possible that Linen Lab may consider trying to fix some of the bugs that come with deferred? Well, yeah, I mean, I was <laughs> <laughs> you breaking up. Are, obviously. Um, but <laughs> Sorry, uh, voice is really choppy. We, yeah, sorry. Let me just double check that I'm on the right sound device here. It sounds more like a network clog issue. And bandwidth. Oh, we, we, would, we would obviously need to know which which bugs you think those are. Um, and you've got quite a few Jiras on them. Um, Worley can certainly uh, send you a list. There are the obvious Invisiprim issues, um, which I would love to see Address, but not likely. I, I would visit Prims. To be I, I think we've been pretty clear on that. Yeah, <laughs> they're not going to get fixed. Visit Prims are broken. They're not supported. End of story. 
Uh, but there are some other issues with uh, alphas and uh, various things. I can get, um, I'll ask Worley if she can put together a list for you. I'll send it via email. Great. Uh, I can pass that on. It's just my concern is that you're going to have, you're going to end up breaking a lot of people by surprise. We will be um, if we if we follow your lead. And obviously we're going to have to follow your lead with the materials project. And uh, that becomes a heavy load on support and pisses off users, you know, that kind of thing. People don't understand. They don't understand what? Deferred is causing them to have these graphic glitches. To them, it's just the viewer's crap. Right, so... Yeah, let's let's not let's let's not get into the whole of Invisiprim thing. We're we're just not that's not going to be a good use of time, um, and it's not really a, an issue we're going to do anything about. Um, the so it, it is my it is my current belief that that uh, that rendering materials will be dependent on having deferred rendering enabled. Um, that is to say, lighting and shadows enabled um, in, in the options. So uh, I don't believe there's a plan to make that not true. Uh, so um, on the other hand, it ought to... Um, it, it ought to be true that uh, you still see a reasonable version of things if if you don't have the um, if you don't have the, the material the deferred rendering enabled if you don't have lighting and shadows on um, you, you'll just see the defer diffuse texture um, which should you know unless people start creating things that that actually look wrong when you only see the diffuse texture um, then which would be poor quality content creation really um, the uh, you know we'll we'll have to see what people do yeah I think that's part of the problem with you know as Invinci prim is an example is that they're using this bug and they don't realize you know, some of the content creators don't realize that it's actually broken and deferred because they don't use it themselves. And I think that's where some of the issues are coming from. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure what to do about that. There is a new I have not actually looked at it, but there's a there's a new uh, part of the wiki or part of the website that's um, that's uh, being pushed. That's uh, you know sort of good building practices, or, or uh, I forget what they're called, what it's called. Um, what I can what I what I will do is uh, encourage the people working on that to um, begin adding some material. On how to do, how to correctly use normal and specular maps, and the associated parameters. When we get to the point where that's ready to come out, it's we're, we're not there yet. I'm afraid that most people uh, probably can't run lighting and shadows, and under that logic, then uh, the materials project most people won't be able to see the world that way. Um, so most people will see the world differently, and uh, it would be unfortunate that's true anyway. that, that work. I mean, the, the world is very diff looks very different if you turn lighting, lighting and shadows well, yeah. on almost everywhere. So... Yeah, I usually have it on. different, but not necessarily better. Well, the big issue is performance, right? You obviously can't turn on, even on a, a good system, most good systems can't run shadows in a, in a crowded sim, for example. Uh, 
I'm just thinking along the lines of adoption issues, and and then there's the you know the issue of turning deferred on for more people by default, and and the reaction that's going to result in. Those are my two issues. Right. Uh, it's it's not a question of it's not a question of our having chosen to do it in order to in order to either include or exclude people. It's a question of if you don't have the horsepower it takes to do lighting and shadows, you don't have what it takes to do the normal and specular maps feature. That's that's the problem. If you, but if, if there's you, if there's more people who can't see that, you're going to have content matter. creators not it, creating it, that content. Well, you see what I mean? Uh, okay, but the, but but by that argument, we should eliminate all the advanced graphics features in Second Life. We should just get rid of them all because most people can't run them. No, that's not what I'm <laughs> suggesting, obviously. <laughs> well, but it is what you're suggesting because there yeah, isn't is. a way for us to magically say we can do normal and specular maps f for people that don't have the hardware capable of doing it. We, we can't. There, there isn't a reasonable way to do it. That's that's the problem. It's not we've we we haven't made the decision in order to exclude anybody. We have made the decision based on what it takes to get the job done. So that's that's really that's all it is. And if that means that people create content that other people can't see, um, or that only a subset can see, well, that's always been true. Um, and you know, we don't want to punish the the users who can see it by not doing the features that they want to be able to do really cool stuff for them. So. Um. Yeah, exactly. Oh, anyway, uh, and we're we're still too early to assess, you know, what the performance impact of it is. Anyway, so yeah, uh, hopefully it won't be too long before before that statement won't be true anymore. But. Um, it's still true right now. Other topics? Uh, that was it for me. Yeah, shoot. All right. I saw your I saw your blog about being able to suppress it. If I remember right, there's some crashers that use Fulbright to overload the, uh, the video card. Well, they use a combination of things. Fulbright is one of them. Yeah. I mean, the crashers themselves use, use a combination of things. I, I, I have no opinion about that. I'm more than happy to hear a, a cogent... Dis written description of what what alternative uh, you know people would suggest. I mean, Fulbright exists for a reason. It is a useful building tool for certain circumstances, um, even if it sometimes produces aesthetically. Well, yeah. I mean, again, we we can't eliminate features because some people use them badly. That. Uh, it, we would eliminate all of Second Life if we did that. <laughs> I think Naran right. is suggesting um, a, a viewer side just, capability yeah. of disabling right. So, right. Right. So, so that's that sounds really simple. Except the question that the next question after that is, what do we do instead? What's the reasonable thing to do for all values of places where Fulbright has been used? That replace, you know, what do you do instead of Fulbright when somebody Just has indicated render Fulbright? Render it like you would without Fulbright? Yeah, but then most things that use Fulbright would look completely wrong. I mean, they're supposed to be readable signs, for example. Mostly we're trying to get rid of options. So if you want to add an option, you. I, I've seen your blog, yes, and and 
Um, although from a, from a cinematography photography point of view, I understand the argument. Um, I'm not sure that I necessarily agree that it would improve the world for second life to have that option. Um, so, uh, but, but the, the, the point, well, yes, and, and, and I certainly don't object to you providing that option. Uh, the point I'm making is, that I, that I guess I'd like to make is, uh, this isn't obviously the right place to have the argument because none of the people who could make the decision are here or should be here. We don't, we don't want them coming in. These meetings. Um, but uh, if, if you want to write up a, a good description of why it should be done and, and, and what, uh, you know, what should be done instead and, and so forth, uh, I'm glad to take that to the powers that be and see if I can convince them that, that you're right. I mean, we do add options now and then, even though I hate them, but that's all right. I, I, there, there really isn't any point going through, you know, all the permutations of the, of the options we might or might not ever do here, because I don't get to choose that. I don't get to pick. Um, I'm more than happy to hear the suggestion. Uh, when's our next stat, Oz? Monday. Will you have a full week? I believe. Well, assuming nothing goes wrong over the weekend. Okay. The, I'm the, quite curious the, what uh, our numbers are between foe and firestorm. There were some glitches in the stat system over the vacation, so I decided not to attempt to try to do retroactive ones because that's hard at the best of times and was clearly not going to produce very high quality results no matter what. But so far this week, everything has been good. So, um, yeah, uh, it's not a point that uh, has been lost on me. Uh, but it is what it is, and we make the best of it. Caddy, you got to catch up with um, your stat stuff. <laughs> if anybody knows good people to, that are into doing that sort of thing, I mean, the mechanics of producing that sort of thing, I believe we've got a wreck for somebody in that area. Uh, well, Kat is pretty amazing at it. <laughs> Although he's been lazy lately. idea what we pay for anything except me okay what do you get paid <laughs> <laughs> not enough to answer that question <laughs> I think that's a zing <laughs> um Oh. Speaking of stats, do, will we be able to get access to the uh, performance data that we're sending? You know, the frame rate and such. Um, if you tell me what you're after, I can try. Um, the Some things I have relatively easy ways to get at, and other things I don't. Um, I'll be glad to dig what into I'm looking it. At basically is similar to what Dave P is looking at for uh, the performance of the cards, you know, the frame rate, average frame rate for each card. To kind of gauge how the performance is doing. Ah, okay. Um, I can look into that. Oh, I have one to stump okay. you with, Oz. Why are you using uh, free type? What is it? Four point four point two or four point two point two on Windows, and not on Linux and Mac. Two four four. 
Two four four. Sorry. Wait, what was that? Has somebody changed one of them and didn't change the other ones? No, uh, two four four was on Mac as well. Oh, was it on Mac as well? But not yeah, Linux. Only Linux. Not oh well. Back when uh, n- you know nobody cared about Linux. You know, it's a, it's a, (laughs) you know, why are we doing something on the other platforms that we're not doing on Linux is pretty much a spot question, right? (laughs) I just wasn't sure if there was actually a reason for it because uh, we've discovered, um, we as in Kata and Serial and a couple have discovered that the old free type, go ahead Kata, you can explain it better. Um, Am I... Am I audible? Am you're you're good. It's you're a little good. low, okay. but it's good. Okay. I'm, I'm using a different device than normal because my other one's totally ballsed. Um, 244 makes the most ugly text. Um, and that was actually what, a known what? issue with 244 of I free know. time. I know. Yeah, I know. I've, uh, I've found this, although this this things I'm seeing that saying this... Um, date after the last time I seriously took a look at the problem. What um, I wanted to know is, is there a specific reason that yeah, I was using Yeah, you didn't see my comment in chat like yesterday, the day before. It was a, I think it was Storm 1060. Um, I didn't read all the comments, but I think the whole reason about using 244 was uh, just to update it for auto-build. Um, just so, I guess it wasn't using the old build that uh, was built on... Um, Visual Studio 2005. Hmm. I think that was the whole reason because um, FreeType 239 did not come with um, project files for newer Visual Studios, even though it will build. Right. I'm guessing someone else outside of Storm, I think 1060, I'm not sure if that's the correct one, um, updated the Linden 3P repo for FreeType, but. Um, I think it was one of the wolf pups that updated that did the, um, the storm for updating the auto build library. I think I'm not sure, um, but it was all around the same time, which was uh, uh, whatever 21 months ago was. So this is real old. Well, we're switching back to 239 because uh, it makes the fonts a lot more crisp, slightly nicer. Yeah. There's still the whole problem with um, why the uh, UI code will randomly, not randomly, will in certain places on the UI is incapable of rendering white text white. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there. Like the um, inventory, the white text is slightly gray, even though it is supposed to be white text. And I think chat and other random places in the UI are similarly affected. Um, backgrounds also seem to be similar in which the uh, defined color isn't the final rendered color. There seems to be some kind of odd mixing going on somewhere. And I've, I've never been able to track down that reason, just mainly because the UI code is so drastically different in Viewer 2. It looks like in the latest uh, 4.11, they're starting to implement Microsoft's uh, clear text. Ew, that's another whole problem. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't any exploits or security issues with going back to 239. Uh, not that I know of. I'm, in, in general, if we upgrade a package somewhere and don't upgrade it on Linux, then it's just because whoever did the upgrade didn't think it was worth their time to do Linux. Uh-huh. So it wouldn't be an exploit. Or they didn't know how to do it, or they didn't have a machine to do it on, or, you know, any of the variations, uh, on, variations that theme. on that theme. I've also noticed that with the um, the library builds, uh, the uh, like Zlib and the things they use is also becoming out of sync with the viewer. Um, I also want to point out that um, newer free type versions, they still have the um, very rather poor... Um, render quality on the glyphs, but the kerning gets better on later versions after 244. I've tried a 2410 and 2411. The kerning gets better, but the um, hinting is still absolutely awful. Uh, 
Oh, and uh, Deja Vu still looks bad, either case. <laughs> Yeah, if um, if somebody wants to, you know, help with getting the Linux build of the free type correct, uh, I'll be glad to work that through correct. the process. It's, it's the two well in sync with the other. It's awful. It be more or less probably reverting others back. Yeah, it actually looks better on Linux than it does Windows and Mac. Yeah, which is why I don't hear any complaints from the... They always hear the Linux people complaining at me that, oh, it looks fine. No, it's just Windows. That's why you're not seeing any of the problems I'm pointing out. You're on, Win you're on Linux or something. I'm not sure about Mac. The only Mac I have is a Mini, and uh, the viewer... Well, it seems that the problem is just Windows. Um, yeah. I don't think we've had complaints from Mac or Linux users. I think it's because... Um, Mac users are um, used to that kind of text because it seems to be sort of a standard of, uh, I think, light-hinted fonts. Well, and more specifically, um, Mac users are used to having their fonts look a lot smoother uh, than Windows users are. Every time I look at a, at a Windows system, the fonts look just absolutely crappy to me. Yeah. Yeah, well, the last time I seriously used a... Um, a Mac myself was, uh, I think, uh, System 9, or actually the last, version, last Mac I owned prior to this Mini was, uh, I think, a System 5. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 the um, fonts I'm used to on Macs were uh, literally um, one pixel per dot on a character, because, you know, screens were so small. Remember that being a huge problem on the, uh, God, what were they called? The all-in-one Power Max? I used to service them, and I don't remember what they're called. <laughs> Those things were awful. Well, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know what the motivations for changing from one version to another were. Um, if there's if there's an improvement to be made um, by moving forward, that's probably a good thing. Um, there we go. I suspect there's going to be there, some there. argument against moving backward, regardless of, of what that's, the issues are. That's the gyra. I think it was for an unrelated issue. Probably I'll provide you the old build. with our user feedback when we release with the old uh, free type. I have a feeling there'll be um, some happy people. There's been a lot of people complaining about readability, uh, regardless of what skin they use. And um, um, this to be part of it, yeah. Um, you'll want to have it tested with um, all the font options as well, because it could be that... Um, Deja Vu particularly has an issue with uh, 239, perhaps. Oh, dear. But just check it. I would not be, uh, I wouldn't have any problems just getting rid of Deja Vu entirely, but that's just me. I got some uh, examples here. Other issues? Topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Monty, for you, um, how are you coming on your server-side HTTP stuff? Um, the uh, development is actually mostly done. 
I am um, working on some defensive actions. Uh, there are so many services trans transiting our Apache stack that I uh, started getting nervous, so I'm putting some th more defenses in. Another problem has actually been statistics and metrics again. Um, the My mention of OpenTSDB is that I'm building a little analysis system around it for some stuff I'm going to start collecting, and I've got to get that out. But the technical pieces are there, and now it's really just a matter of QA and a deployment plan, at which point, uh, like we talked about earlier on, I'm going to put up some things on a DD, including special regions, special sim hosts with uh, alternate configurations that are more aggressive or more error prone or whatever, and have people go at them. But um, I um, really want to get this going quickly and get it up so I can get some feedback and so I can get back to the viewer side and um, spread the HTTP goodness to th other pieces of code and get the whole package working better and better. Uh, so slower progress than I want, but uh, the server side is coming into site and taking shape. Do you anticipate you'll have that done before server side baking? Um... It's a race, actually. <laughs> We're both in the yeah. same uh, office. I can uh, watch them work. Um, I mean, they're grossly overstaffed. Nick's and all those people, they just, it's like 300 people working on it, and I just have to work alone. But uh, yeah, I think I can beat them. <laughs> they're pretty weak. <laughs> um, so we'll see. We don't actually have schedules, so we don't know how that's actually going to turn out. But uh, it could happen. Well, banana peels might slow them down. Yeah. Um, the keep lives do matter for asset downloads. I definitely get um, better numbers and better network behavior when I can keep it up and keep um, the connections alive. And um, at least it's looking promising. Things are moving in the right direction. It's just the damn calendar moves too fast. Yeah. So one of the things that Monty and I talked about yesterday was... Uh, when he's got some test regions up running versions of the of the server side HTTP that he would like exercised, um, we may move this meeting to one of those uh, those regions and or um, call on uh, this crew and your all your friends to come help load them up. So uh, watch for we, watch we for opportunities to stress things. Um. Pull in the uh, server um, user group, the one that's on Thursday night. They've done things like that in the past. So, that, yeah. you know, a lot of people who will be right. who are familiar with that are in that group. For Oscar, yeah. Right, but I, one of the things I want to make sure that we do is uh, not only get uh, lots of users, but get lots of users on lots of different viewers, which is why this group is such a nice uh, resource in that regard. Right. So that we can so that we can see if there's if there's problems with a bad mix of viewers. Um, my other question was after this HTTP work that you're doing, are you going to look into depreciating fetching textures through UDP? Or is that going to be there for a long while? I'm always looking at that option. The um, <laughs> the the UDP assumption is baked into a lot of failover paths and and hidden mechanisms, um, it, and it's all over the place. So I'm always nervous about removing it blindly. Um, but when the when the opportunity arises, yeah, I'm, we're going to look at that question. Um, sort of a, not a commitment, but a goal, a goal, a semi-goal, a desired goal is to at least get HTTP reliably uh, working and working at a better performance than UDP before anything like that would happen. Uh, not true for everyone at this point, but um, doing what we can, keeping that in mind. I know, like uh, Phoenix, we have HTTP off by default, which doesn't matter now that it's depreciated, but it's just something to be somewhat aware of. 
Well, there are a lot of people, obviously, you know this, don't that aren't able to use HTTP for one reason or another. Hopefully those yeah, will be fixed. Apparently, uh, HTTP is really bad with uh, people in Japan, which is kind of interesting. Huh. Well, it's not that bad. <laughs> what it is... You it, complain anyway. <laughs> yes. What it is bad for is people with certain routers. Um, particular... Uh, Prokofi is one of them. As a low-end router, and she cannot use uh, HTTP textures at all. It did will... you say Croc? Yes, I did. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> I work with everybody. <laughs> and um, oh, yeah, to, to her, it's a very to interesting her, case. It, it's a very interesting case because she had been complaining for a long time that Second Life was, was crashing her router, and it it, it it turns out that that's what it was. Uh, so you guys actually of... were crashing her. I read Absolutely. this blog post. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, her <laughs> and everybody else who has that router. It wasn't her specifically. It was anybody who had that, that router. Um, well, but to her, it was her specifically. <laughs> well. Um, uh, it is a, a Belkin wireless G. Um, quite old uh, version 2. has the interesting effect that if you churn a lot of connections... And possibly DNS. DNS may have been part of the trigger. I forgot. I've got the notes somewhere. It will actually lock you out for five solid minutes. It's wow. built into the firmware. I will watch it die for exactly 300 seconds. Oh, that's brilliant. It's a brilliant router. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the kind of stuff you see out there. And no one knows what's really going wrong because it's embedded in the wire as far as anyone can tell. Well, it also works on my old D-Link, but uh, not quite as well as I would have expected. I mean, UDP still works better for me. At least these uh, Action Tech routers that come with uh, the file services are pretty good. Anybody's are interested? any of these... Um, are Monty, any of has, these... Sorry. Monty has put together a pretty good... Um, set of directions on how to take measurements of HTTP performance from your client and, and is more than happy to collect the resulting information. So, uh, <laughs> so I remember when a HTTP was first turned on, I could actually max out my 20 megabit connection. We all could. That was before it started getting used. Then it was just as yeah. slow as everything else. Yeah, it was cool up until it started being used <laughs> by everything, by default. Then it was worse. Far worse. I thought it was kind of cool to have a few months in which uh, things loaded quickly. It was... Uh, very unusual to have fast loading anything. So, stay tuned. We're making progress and uh, we're going to try and spread that progress throughout the ecosystem here. Are um, there any? Uh, are there any? Just quickly, do you know, Mount Monty, if there are any routers that are being issued by internet service providers that are being affected? And if so, do you know what service providers those would be? Um, the caveat about all this is we're never going to be in the router testing business. We just can't cover it. Right. Um, so I've only got a few data points, and I'm not going to get too many more, I'm pretty certain. There is one, and I can't remember it offhand. I'm going to have to check my notes and, and my various spreadsheets to see what it is. AT&T actually may not be one of the, um, the sources of a bad router, um, I th as well as one of the Deut German telecoms. They were getting it made by um, one of the really cheap Asian manufacturers. And uh, I have some suspicions about it. But mostly it's been um, the people who are trying to save the most pennies on the router. And that's Belkin. Buying cheap. That's Linksys, yeah. They, they put four megs of flash in in a, in a 
router made in 2010, which is just inexcusable. And uh, that's a good sign. Things aren't working well. For my own purposes, for what it's worth, I've tested uh, Cisco Lynx's E4200. That's a not too expensive router, and that is um, has nice reliable throughput. But um, the uh, sort of turnkey systems you're getting from cable ISPs and files and so on, yeah, I haven't done too much investigation on those. I know that we often get, uh, we'll have users with an issue and, and we've determined the router or their service provider and have them contact the service provider and the service provider says, no, your connection is fine. Well, this, uh, the service provider can't test Second Life. And Second Life is obviously a little bit special for most email programs. And uh, so they always get the same result from their ISPs. Is that there's nothing wrong? So, actually, quickly digress, uh, Latif. Yeah, actually, I was kind of rejecting Speedy before. Um, one, I don't trust Google, and I hold my nose at them. The magic behind Speedy things, I really think, uh, compression and the, the multiplexing. The um, data push out of Speedy is hilarious. It still cracks me up uh, how that works. But um, someday I might actually get a chance to and spend some time on that. But back to the um, ISPs. At some point, and this is something... TPVs could actually take up would be um, start putting some better diagnostic stuff in on the viewer side, um, including putting it in the uh, the new core library. And there are some diagnostics you can do, mainly time based. For example, if you see connection failures on the order of one or two milliseconds, you know that is physically very close to the viewer. And it's probably a home setup. Two, three, four, five milliseconds. That's an indication that it's ISP problem. And further out. Um, then you're starting to talk to our services. So there's some heuristic stuff we could start doing to make a better diagnostic system on the viewer side. And um, it's total hand-waving blue sky stuff at, at this point for us, but my God, if somebody out there wants to experiment with that, that would be wonderful. Good to know. Okay. Uh, are we done? I think I'm done. Yeah, making that Making that materials code a public repo was actually something of a boo-boo on my part, but it doesn't matter. Um, probably in a in a couple of weeks, the main integration repo for that will be will be public. Um, but uh, and we'll hopefully have a project viewer at some point shortly after that. Will that go um, but, in around the same time as the server side baking stuff? No idea. Okay. Absolutely no idea. It will go in when we're satisfied that it's good. <laughs> um, the 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 server side of that code we believe is in pretty good shape at this point. So, uh, um, I can make that suggestion to the team, Latif, but that's not my decision to make. So that what they're what they're doing is only pushing things out to there when it's already been through our QA and they're and they're satisfied that what they're doing is giving you code that's uh, in good shape. So you're not seeing the intermediate versions that have bad problems. At least that's the intent. Is there any incline on when uh, the Chewy code will be available? Not necessarily integrated into anything. Uh, it, you know, um, thank you for the reminder on that um, because I had uh, I had asked that question before the holidays, and the answer was let's talk about it after the holidays. So I will I will have that conversation again. What is that acronym? 
stand for anyway? I wasn't around Patience. when it came out. I think it's Communications Hub User Interface. Ah, uh, it's very strange. Very space hungry too, but well, there's aspects of it we like and aspects we yeah. don't. So we're gonna cherry pick. Yeah, yeah it's I, better than um the Syswell. I, I used it for a while, and it was it, it, I, I was I was liking it, but then that branch broke place upon which I am heavily dependent. So I stopped using it until they until they fixed that again. I have to check on that bug at one of these days. My my impression of it using it for a few minutes was um it would be a very it wouldn't be a, it would be a rather nice IM client if it was independent of the viewer. But the viewer <laughs> just seems to take up a lot of space. So you well, guys gonna you work on a text based viewer? Well I mean there, just chatting wise. There are lots of, of space. There are lots of things you can do to tweak how much space it takes up. It's it's a lot right. of Customizability in that regard. Who, who I'm adding to and um, and what they're saying it takes up an awful lot of space because the uh, the tab the new tab space is massively wide. Yes, well, maybe maybe you know some of the members of that team have invested in companies that make large monitors or something. I don't know. Uh, I use large <laughs> monitors. Do we and, have any uh, uh, Lindens here actually that are working on that? Should we? I'm going to say no. Yeah, I would suggest then that would answer that. Silence is deafening. <laughs> well, that might be because least, they're not willing to no admit it. Yeah, I was just going to no, say, I, maybe nobody wants to admit it. Nobody <laughs> wants I, to I, don't, I don't believe we do. I don't believe we do, actually. So, um, but I will I will uh, talk to people about, about getting that code visible. Okay. Uh, before the holidays, there were some, there were some, Additional refactorings they intend to do. And They're breaking up really bad. Had been done before they, uh, sorry. Um, the issue with holding off was that they didn't want to, they, they still were going to do. Um, You're good now, Oz. Okay, they were still going to do a couple of major refactorings and they didn't want to put it out and have people merge it and then change it on them again. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that was that was what I was told. So the question is, you know, are they within some reasonable delta of what they think their final version is going to be? The whole icon-centric view in uh, Viewer 2, 3, and Chewy is still very annoying to me, but that's just me. I don't recognize things by tiny, tiny, tiny little pictures. Yeah, no, I, I have no comment on all, any UI issues. I, that's just yeah, the clickouts. Those 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 can go. <laughs> okay. Um, on that note, I think we'll we'll wrap it up for this week. Uh, one one last note, right before we adjourn. Please, please, please uh, work on merging the Sunshine code and uh, test it out. And send me bug reports. I need bug reports. Now that I'm well, we've got it merged now. We'll see if we can get it into beta yeah. group. Has anyone looked at the code? No, for they that don't yet? have. Is it a lot sunshine of things yet. changed? It's a uh, 275 change sets, so there's a fair amount. Oh, I thought that's there. what you merged. That's why I was asking earlier. I was merging up to viewer development to where um, Sunshine is forked off of. Jeez, what's taking so long? Snap, snap. <laughs> uh, kitty. Yeah, we've got RLV uh, that we have to deal with with the Sunshine merge. Oh, no. Um, Linden Lab introduced some new uh, theming code for uh, their uh, Steam product. And that conflicted with Kitty's theme code, so she had to fix it up. We wait theme code in default. <laughs> uh, the themes for like, uh, you know, for the various skins. There's skins in regular in viewer. Firestorm? Yeah. No, I'm in the regular viewer. Let's see what we can do next. Oh, there is now. Oh, that's weird. A, you gotta, you gotta whip tank. But now that I'm caught up, that my next 
thing to do next week is to work on the sunshine stuff. Yeah, what's in the steam skin anyway? Not much. Some icons. Oh. Sounds silly. I just left that out of the merge. Yeah, because I don't think we'll be getting on Steam. Well, we probably could, but I don't see the point in trying. At least yet. Oh, speaking of thing, Steam, is there any... Uh, is Lynn Labs looking into adding to the other stores, like the Apple Store or Microsoft Store? <laughs> if we <laughs> were, I wouldn't funny. be able to talk about it. Oh, yeah. Apple Store. There is no way. In, yeah, changes. there's no way in hell it will qualify for the Apple Store. Yeah, it works on things other than Apple. <laughs> Did you notice that we we're on yeah. Amazon now? You're on Amazon. You? Amazon what? what? Yeah. <laughs> Amazon. As what? in the the store Amazon. Yeah, Amazon.com. You can download second no. one from Amazon.com now. They have a whole games thing. Look for free games on Amazon, it. you'll find it. I, I searched uh, for I, Second I, Life, and the first thing that comes up is Mobile Grid Client, and then books, and then laptops, and then music. They're somewhere. <laughs> You're not even the first result. Do Second Life games. Or a Second Life game. By the way, Second Life is not actually a game. Just saying. Oh, there uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not getting into that debate, one way or the other. <laughs> what the hell? Why do you have? Vo Why are there vehicle packs? <laughs> what the premium, is isn't it? Uh, no, it just says deluxe vehicle pack, premium vehicle pack. Okay. Wait, can I? Hmm. I, I I was selling on Amazon, but that's that's turned into drama. Um, I wonder if I could list against this. <laughs> All right, I think we're done. Thanks, everybody. I think so too. Thanks, us. Thanks, Monty Thank and Nick and everyone. Take care, everybody. I'll probably be talking with you a bit more next week. Next. What is IETF? Oh my god. Really? The Internet Engineering Task Force. It is. Uh, uh, it's, it's the group that basically passes on all Internet protocols. Okay, then why does Oz have a island? He, he used island? to be IETF. I did not know that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he, he was one of the people that wrote HTTP version 1.1. Oh, fun. So we can blame him for it sucking? Yeah, basically. Oh, good. <laughs>